Hello and welcome everyone. Today is Thursday, October 27th. This is our Thursday community call. Uh, today we're going to be having a bit of a, I was going to say a meta episode, though these aren't episodes, these are calls. Uh, we're having a discussion, although I guess if you're tuning later, then it's uh, as good as an episode. Uh, but yeah, today we'll, we will be doing a bit of a more of a meta discussion of kind of the nature of these calls uh, and where we can head from uh, from where kind of where we've been and where we're headed. Uh, and I'll pass it off to Angel to run us, uh, to run the call and run us through that shortly. But real quick, I just want to give a chance for anyone in the community to announce uh, any uh, anything that the community should know about, you know, what other uh, activities, calls, uh, etc., are coming up. Uh, I'll just quickly plug that this time next week, next week's community call, we will have um, uh, we will have Ben from the Otter Space team uh, presenting on Otter Space, and then we will be having a wider discussion on the nature of soulbound tokens, excuse me, or non-transferable NFTs. Uh, so that's next uh, Thursday. But anyone have any other kind of things they want to plug with the community? Yeah, Paul, did you want to jump in? I just want to jump in with some end of month stuff. So as we are rapidly approaching the end of October and some people's favorite holiday of Halloween, um, don't forget that if you are interested in claiming your source cred for October, that you need to make sure that you're opted in uh, by October 31st uh, on the Discord channel um, that is uh, about the source cred opt-in. Make sure that you've both filled out that form. And if you have like a different username or anything like that, or you're not sure if you entered your stuff in correctly, go ahead and fill out that form a second time. That would be fine. And then also make sure to respond to the second message, which is just a reaction opting in for the month. Um, Brian is now taking screenshots of those so that we are sure that we have all the people who actually um, opted in and we can verify that. Uh, also related to end of the month stuff, uh, we are very close to the end of this month for comment of the month nominations as well. So um, if you have seen some good activity uh, during the month of October, and I know that you have because the cohort uh, produced a lot of content, it was really great content. Um, feel free to um, nominate people that you thought really added some value. It is just kind of an honor to be recognized. I think it is a wonderful thing that we do as a community to kind of nominate people for the hard work and the thought that they put into our forum. Uh, and then obviously we will then launch a poll uh, the first week of November so that we as a community can also pick who we kind of felt like were the top three comments of the month. Um, but first step is obviously making those nominations. So um, go ahead and please do that. That's what I got. Cool. There's also a, a short URL for source cred opting in, and I'll put that in the chat just for reference. Thank you, Brian. Any other calls, activities, or announcements for the community? Yes, Angel. Uh, yeah, so the coffee house will not really be happening after this. Um, I don't know if anyone just saw Jonathan's message, but um, I will stick around and hang out in there if anyone wants to come discuss anything in particular that they have in mind, but there will not be like an official one. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for letting us know there. I know John is traveling with the DSI Labs crew at the moment for all the Lisbon activities. There's a ton going on there this week, next week, between the Lisbon IPFS camp and some other stuff. Uh, but yeah, any other kind of announcements for the community or anything? Otherwise, I will pass it off to Angel, but I'll give a final pause in case anyone does have anything else. Yeah, just last uh, last thing I'll mention is next week on Friday, 1 PM Pacific time is the community chat guild where we're going to be discussing all the latest changes to our Discord chat server. And so if that's interesting to you, feel free to show up. And if you have any feedback as far as the chat is concerned, that's also a great place to bring that discussion forward. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Yvonne? I just wanted to remind everybody to check out the first episode of the second season of our podcast. It's the audio exclusive uh, episode recorded in Bogota with Renee Davis and John from Safetel. Uh And yeah, as of next week, we're going to be starting publishing the block science episodes, which will have both video and audio versions. 
Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for uh, plugging that and for uh, leading the production on that, Yvonne. Um, yeah, really excited to get that podcast episode. As Yvonne mentioned, we kind of had a one-off. Uh, and thank you, Paul, for dropping the thread as well and Ralph to, to put that one together. But yeah, we just got the, the second season out with a one-off on uh, the Safe Now episode. And then the rest is this kind of seven-episode exploration of block science. But yeah, if anyone does ha remember anything else that they want to plug with the community, please feel free to drop that in the chat on the side. Uh, otherwise, uh, Angel, I will pass it off to you to uh, run the call. Cool. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I have a little slide show. Uh, there we go. Cool. So this screen call is about the community call. As Eugene was saying, it's a little bit meta here, but I um, kind of just want to preface this saying, like, this is not necessarily a presentation. These are just sort of like broad topics that I thought would be good to discuss, and I would very much like this to be a discussion. Um, you know, the things that I've written on here are just my own ideas for prompting that discussion. Um, you know, please feel free to throw out any ideas that you have involving this. Um, so, yeah. So the sort of like topics that I thought we could cover are sort of like the purpose of the community call, the discussion itself, you know, how do we increase inclusivity, coffee house versus the community call, uh, questions, thoughts at the end. Um, again, don't feel the need to stay on this. This is just what I thought of. So, but yeah, I would, I would like to start with like the purpose of the community call, um, particularly like what kind of value we feel like we're getting and where we want to see more value add. Um, like I personally think it's very valuable for people because we have a lot of different types of community calls, the ones that involve like scurf topics themselves, you know, presentations from outside sources. Um, but like, what are y'all finding valuable out of all of these different types of community calls we have? Is what I'm wondering. If anyone has any thoughts, yeah, Chris. Yeah, so I know uh, from the very beginning, the community call was meant to be uh, an open forum in which the people that were the internal operations within SCURF had the capacity to share a forum with the actual community in real time. Um, additionally, because there were times when people wanted to do presentations, it's like also uh, a way that having this regular meeting creates a sense of community, um, but also allows a sort of finite uh, discussion to occur with an open end in that um, it can be about the community itself, or like the community, like th the fact that we're having this community call about the community call falls within the realm of what it was meant to capture. Um, and further, it's like, it, it also, like, say someone from the community wanted to give a presentation about something they thought SCURF could benefit from. That would be something the community call would be perfect for them to uh, be able to pitch that in. So it, it's like, the, the, the idea from the very beginning was that there is something that happens in real time exchanges that is not going to be able to be captured in the forum or even in uh, Discord necessarily in that people are not uh, synchronous all the time. Like Discord is, is asynchronous and synchronous. It can be synchronous, but when, when, I, when we're all on the call, it's a synchronous discussion where, but also because it's being recorded, people can come watch it later. Um, so this is where in, in terms of inclu inclusivity, uh, access is one thing, but inclusivity is a whole different element where the community call is, is this inclusive element where opening the forum to anyone who wants to participate in the sense of contributing to the community uh, gets that chance. It's like anybody who wants to give like a five minute or, or whatever, how long, it, however long it takes. Uh, but the community call is that opportunity for them to present. So 
the the idea itself was really sort of born of creating something that was uh encouraging inclusivity mm -hmm. um yeah so like with that sort of inclusivity thought um there always whenever i'm in these it always comes to mind that there's a lot of different names and different people that flow through this call and um not a ton of people necessarily like participate so i'm wondering like are are a lot of y'all still getting value out of this um just by like listening and learning um or you know it's yeah that, basically that like is everyone actually getting something out of this uh, i don't know if anyone has anything to chime in on there uh yeah michael yeah so um as a person who attends all of these and almost never um actively um talks uh, i think i do get a lot out of just listening i can tell you from my perspective just because of my role within scurf a lot of times i'm i'm kind of taking notes and trying to think about how to talk about this um, after the fact in a way that's going to be engaging to both people who participated and people who may want to participate um post haste um via the uh, the forum itself, you know, the recap portion on the community section of the forum or by watching the video. Um, so I think I'm kind of one of those silent participants you're talking about, but I do feel like I get a lot out of it. Um, I learn a lot, um, especially when we have, you know, guest presenters. Um, I guess my sort of, the value in it for me is kind of figuring out how I can talk to other people about it after the fact. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually kind of in the same boat too, where like, I don't participate really because I'm busy taking notes. I record the calls and then just so I can get the recap out. Um, you know, my brain space is pretty occupied. Um, I think, mm -hmm. I think too, like a, a good question to ask alongside of that is like, where does the value go out? How does the value go with you outside of the meeting, or how does the value persist outside of the meeting? I think that's another kind of area we can explore. Yeah, active listening. Very true. Um, you know, I just I just want to make sure that people are actively listening, if if they want to, of course, um, so that people are getting are getting the value out of this. Because like, uh, in my focus, I suppose, is like growing the community as well as like growing the bonds between the community. Um, so I, that's like something that I would like to get out of this, uh, but I'm not sure that it's necessarily doing that. Um, which is why you know we're here and why I want to hear people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're here. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I feel like these calls a lot of times are set up so that we come out of it having learned something. If we did want to do something more, I don't know, like engaging where we all interact, I feel like having somewhat of a different format. Maybe there's like breakout rooms, maybe there's like thoughtful questions that we bring up, like discussion points, that could be something we think about. Um, but otherwise, I feel like there's a lot of learning that happens right now, which is awesome. I get a lot of value out of that too. Yeah, Brian. Um, so what about sort of going around the room, not necessarily like live in real time at this moment, but like create a way for people to sort of submit their own expertise and their own ideas. Um, you know, in the past, I've done presentations about GitHub, about like kind of how we might want to use GitHub and things like that. But I don't know, I'm just kind of thinking out loud, like maybe we can create a way for um, people to bring their expertise forward and volunteer uh, to create um some kind of presentation and if we can build a schedule of such um types of content then i think that would be really a compelling thing to kind of add not only value but interaction community building um yeah but then you know the trouble is like well we, if you put it out there and see who responds that would be just kind of yeah I'll let Paul, if you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, sure. I could um, kind of add on to what I just put in the comments. Like, so yeah. I like that idea of, uh, as a member of our community, like I do think that there's lots of different types of value that people get from here. And often like it is learning. And I think in the call itself, um, 
it's not always maybe the comfort of, hey, I want to let's talk. But I think that we do have some very capable people throughout our community who would have things to add to the community to call itself. And then having some type of form that says, hey, I'd be interested in talking about X, Y, Z. Um, and maybe it's even, you know, I think that I'd only have to talk about it for like 10 minutes, like, but I need 10 minutes. Um, how do I queue that up and coming up with a system like that would help people not only get value from these calls, um, but also see that they can add value to that. And I know that's the thing that Angel's eventually going to get to. So I don't want to like sidetrack him too much. I know he wanted discussion, but I also uh, know that he's got some points to make. No, nah, no, nah, I think that letting this be more free form so we're, we don't kind of have to like put a pin in things and forget things. Like, like look, it's, it's a discussion. You know, the this, this slides are only here for prompting. Um, like on that topic of like people being able to sort of give their own input to the call. Like that, that's something I thought about, right? And then we've discussed uh, internally for like the uh, quest system, like, hey, maybe like a reward for a quest is like you get um, bumped to the front of the line, you get to give your little soapbox or talk about specific research you want to talk about or whatever it may be. Um, I guess like pretty high level quest reward, but uh, you know, thoughts on that from the larger community? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I love that idea and like the idea of having, yeah, topics, pitches, whatever we want to go with ahead of time is awesome to me. One other thing that I think could be cool, I'm just throwing out a bunch of ideas, but <laughs> one other thing that could be cool is like themes. So maybe themed months or themed quarters or whatever, so that we can really hone in maybe on a topic or on something that's happening in the news or i don't know lots of different possibilities there but it could be interesting so that people who are really interested in that thing know that we're doing it and want to show up yeah i like like continuity between calls so that it's like a continued discussion and not just like one-offs that's a really good idea. exactly yeah okay um well. i'll even go one step deeper on the meta level and say that perhaps we could even spin up a community chat guild to discuss how to manage and drive these things outside the normal cadence of the this call itself i can i can foresee there being somebody uh, managing a project board right uh issue templates like the whole thing i could see this being actually potentially scaling out to being a quite a big effort um, I'm happy to be a technical liaison to put all that together. Yeah, Chris. So early on, we had discussed making this uh, more of a significant part of SCURF, but because the forum didn't have as much content, it was uh, too much too soon to split the resources within the organization but now i think um looking at the way that the writers cohort has resurrected old threads the community call has the capacity to keep conversations going uh with some direction but also to prevent uh retreading the same content as long as we like if we keep track of what we've discussed then it becomes easier to not re keep retreading the same topic. Cause I'm sure, I know for a fact we've had this call, but there are certain calls that need to be done multiple times. Like this, this is probably at least a quarterly call that we should have where it's like, okay, check in. Is the community call still aligned with our purpose? Like when we started it, is it the same thing as what we intended? Do we need to change it? So this type of, gut check i think is useful for uh, like a quarterly uh sort of i think we lost you there chris oh i was just done i'm sorry i didn't mean to oh okay yeah, i should have no, kinda... passed it off i forgot oh no no worries yeah, no i totally agree with you i just had a quick follow-up comment um, something that uh, Paul and I were speaking about at some point was to do 
a kind of year end review of a, a roll up of a sort of all of the guilds that we've done, all the activity that we've done, and kind of have like a, a comprehensive report, you know. And I think that would that kind of um, that kind of stuff is super great. And if we had it, it could be quarterly or it could be, I don't know, whatever the cadence is. But um, to be basically uh, retrospectively looking back at what we've done, analyzing it, recontextualizing it, and um, you know, that's actually a really great way to just generate content at the end of the day too, especially as we roll through different cycles of different times of the year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, speaking of like content surrounding the call was like, the recaps, do people read those? Are they helpful to anyone in any way? Because uh, I've been doing them and uh, yeah. So it's another thing that I like, I think it should be adding value, but does it? Uh, yeah, I would say that uh, as far as, um, I, I would say that we're probably, is that just ending up in Discord, right? Or is that on the forum? The recaps are posted in the community section on the forum. Okay, cool. No, never mind. Then I, yeah, that's great. I, what I was going to say is, <clears throat> it's good that they're on the forum because it adds more of a historical record. Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. what I was going to get at. Yeah, and yeah, we got the YouTube views. Um, mm. And the one thing I was just going to add really quick is the one thing that the forum has that something like Discord doesn't have nearly as good of is visibility to things like Google and search engines. It's not as uh, auditable or or discoverable. So having things that can summarize content in a video format with text is a really great value add to the organization as far as discoverability is concerned and searchability. So even if anybody can't necessarily say like at an individual level, I would say at an organizational level that content is king at the end of the day. And so it's really useful to have content coming out that is of high quality and has a purpose and that there's a clear purpose. So I just wanted to just raise those points. Yeah, I was going to add to the the value. So right now, I think from views, we're seeing that the recaps are start they're increasing in some views. So some of this is just kind of a habit. Um, but also, uh, I know that in conversations with people that are just kind of in the process of somewhat onboarding to Scurf, that I've directed them to that. Um, so I do not know if they're reading it, but I think that there is some potential non-participatory value that we're getting out of those. Um, I think when we originally created the idea of that, and that's part of the proposal for the community section, is there was some hope that um, people would also interact there because we've definitely had community calls where we get to the end of the community call and there's still like so much discussion that was like right up to the end of time. Um, I think that that's where we haven't seen kind of a um, transition from the in-person call to then writing something on the forum, which is a little bit harder, uh, but maybe that will come with some time as well. Uh, I don't remember who Stan was first, and Chris. I'll go real quick. Just um, So I think one of the issues is we've gone through phases of outreach, and right now I think we have accidentally created an echo chamber and it's not our fault, it's because of the way the social media algorithms work. Um, and one of the things that I think might alleviate this echo chamber is like, whether it's one or two, we, we should probably add another Twitter account specifically for something like the community call or uh, the community itself or whatever, so that it allows these types of discussions to be had on Twitter to start bringing other people into the conversation to funnel them in, but also to be able to retweet the main account in that um, it's not getting engagement because there's not a second account actively retweeting it. Like I have a second account just to retweet myself to get like my tweets in the main, uh, in, in my followers timeline, because if they don't have it on tweets as they're happening, then they're going to have popular tweets. So if it doesn't get engagement, then it's never going to show up. So this is where it's like, I understand there was the desire to like wait for organic engagement, but the way that the algorithms have been modified outside of our forum 
is is making it so that the only people really participating are the ones that have been around and this is where i think in in terms of like how do we uh encourage inclusivity it's like well we have to actively get over the algorithm hump that we are not getting over outside of our form if we're actually going to build more of a community than the one we have now um and i think the the not necessarily the best but uh appropriate ways to go about this is to articulate different entities within scurf that have their own uh goals within the larger mission statement not saying we need multiple people running the different accounts it's like one person could run them but the idea that like if somebody goes to the scurf account for academic uh summaries but then we publish something about the community call and they have no interest in it they're going to mute they might mute it immediately and they never see anything else again so the i like the main account i think is the main twitter account is being an impediment has become an impediment to building the community outside of what we already have and it's not because anyone in the social media is doing anything wrong it's because the algorithm has been i mean it's not just twitter but social media algorithms make it really difficult to whatever platform you're trying to funnel them from and that's where i'm like uh seeing the periods that we've tried to do outreach and build a community versus like the the reason for even having this call is like to it if we don't have a community that is growing this call becomes stagnant in the conversations capacity to actually move forward so i think that's where it's like it does feel like it's stagnant because there's not any uh, the new faces are few and far between it's not that there aren't new people showing up but it's like we're it's the same people every week and that's when it's like hey are we doing are we making you useful time or uh, the best use of this time when it's the, always the same people and i and i'm sorry uh i think maria if you didn't like have anything further uh, I know that hand was up. Yeah, I was going to respond to the forum post, but now I have a lot of ideas <laughs> based on what you said, Chris. So thank you. Um, yeah, I was just going to mention that I think the how we're using the platforms is something important to keep in mind. And for at least the history of SCUR, the forum is a place where we want where we wanted more interaction, where we want more discussion, where we want people to go to comment on things, not simply just consume information. So yeah, it's interesting with the forum post, well, two things. One, I think, I don't know if we link from YouTube to the forum post that you're creating, Angel, but very happy to do that because some people want to consume information in video form, other people I'm sure want to consume it in written form. So definitely happy to do that. And also, I would want us to think about how can we make it more interactive? Like, are there ways so that we can keep the conversation going? And it's not just like people coming and looking at the information. So there could be some fun things we play around with there. In terms of bringing more community to these calls, Chris, I'm with you. I think yeah, it's interesting. I don't know if creating different Twitter accounts would necessarily accomplish that um, because it's like, what is the targeted audience that we want to uh, get to come to our calls? If it's like researchers, that's a known entity. If it's industry players, that's a known entity. People who show up for these community calls, at least right now, is very amorphous because our topics you know span a lot of things and they are very some are very internally focused some are very like some of the calls some are very web three topical focused so it's kind of difficult to 
create a targeted group of folks that we want to promote to in order to bring people over. So I think it's, yeah, like if we want to make these calls more targeted, love that idea and would love to incorporate more targeted promotion but i think until we do that it's kind of just hard because yeah it's hard to predict what the calls are going to be about and who might actually want to join that's all yeah i was basically going to say like all of that but probably a lot less gracefully so <laughs> That's what my head was for. But I think there's some mechanical things that we could do, like if we did have that schedule of content. You know, like we could make sure that the messages gets out on all of our spaces, that it's being present in GitHub, in our forum, on our Scurfio, on chat. You know, there's a lot of, again, mechanical things that we can do to make sure that people outside of this community understand what the value is that this community call offers. Right now, I think that our conversation is very much uh, internally focused uh, up until this up until this point. But I think it's also very interesting thing to consider, like, how do we how do we how do we project our value out? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's really hitting the, the second point on, on my slide here is like, what incentivizes people to come? And like, how do we get uh, how do we incentivize like new people to come as well? Um, I think it's really probably takes a lot more thought and like actual action to uh, figure that out. But those, in my opinion, are hitting on that topic. Um, let's see. I guess. Well, we I can... think if I could just make like a closing sort of thought is like, oh, go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah. Just real quick, academics love talking. So if we like invited academics to present on their like, even in the sense of I know we've done targeted outreach concerning getting primary authors to post on the forum, getting primary authors to speak during community calls. Um, and, and even in the sense of like, I know in t the team internally doesn't get paid to participate. But if we gave uh, people honoraria to present like $500 is pretty standard for academics. Um, unless there's like travel involved, but since it's virtual, there'd be no travel. Um, but if we started establishing like um, outreach where we're like, hey, this uh, out, this article has a really useful topic for the space, and we'd love if the author could present it to the community and then make it so that if there's no pressing agenda for the community, we could actively uh make an agenda that is based on either really good research or really uh intriguing research to the community like is not necessarily good but everybody's interested in it so they're trying to validate whether it's good or not um but those types of like put the research on the spot i think academics would definitely be interested like Again, academics love talking about their work, and that's just that's just a thing. So I don't think we'll have any problem getting academics to come and speak. And and, I, and the only reason academics is like I don't necessarily want to turn the community call into shilling for projects, and I think that's like it's a really fine line of like because academics aren't associated with the project necessarily so that's a it's a lot easier to ensure that we're not turning the community call into like hey come shill your product sorry who uh, I, I think it was brian and muhammad yeah no that's a that's a great point chris actually i think that uh oh oh my <laughs> nice <laughs> i'll try to be fast um so it's just basically this idea like if we build it they will come right like okay so what are we building well, like this has lots to do with marketing and advertising and kind of putting together a, a package um, around content. And what I am kind of getting to here is we could look towards quarter one, maybe, uh, you know, of next year or something and really schedule a big release around a new format and really come up with something really punchy. You know, we can get like new branding on it and kind of just layer a bunch of really cool stuff and have just um, get all of our ducks in a row, right? And do a lot, a couple of small incremental changes, but really try to figure out and establish a framework that we can use to move through 
content at a regular pace, right? And so if we can kind of get that all figured out again, and we can sort of target a certain time frame or a season, if you will, like you know, quarter by quarter or something like that, um, <laughs> then I think that it will really allow us to scale out, right? If we're talking about bringing in professors and having wider audiences and so on and so forth, we want to figure these things out before we scale, right? We want to figure these things out while it's still quiet and while we have time to maneuver. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go help my cat. <laughs> hey, um, I uh, as soon as I heard Chris uh, say uh, having Professor speak, I I immediately tapped the hand. Um, I I couldn't just press plus one. I think that is a uh, a stupendous, uh, very strong suggestion. Um, every, just about every active department in a research one university, um, has, uh, some sort of, uh, what we call colloquia or, or speaker series, uh, usually organized by graduate students, sometimes by undergrads. Um, it is a tremendous, uh, way of keeping contact between academic institutions, uh, between different professors, the circulation of ideas. It's, uh, it's got a long tradition, and if we were to participate in that, to create a, literally a forum for that, um, that, that is, you want to talk about outreach to academics, uh, that, that's, that's, that, that, that that's meaningful. Um, I, I, I couldn't just press plus one. I, I absolutely, uh, I, I think that's a very, very profound suggestion, Chris, and, um, and I, I don't want it to get lost in the ether. Um, I, I, I definitely think that that's something that we should strongly consider. Uh, one, in terms of attract attracting people. Two, in terms of evergreen content. Three, in terms of um, just the value of what we're presenting and the repostability of that content. If we have something, if we have a, uh, a talk given on I don't know what, let's, let's just say it doesn't matter. We have a talk about zero knowledge proofs and we decide to put it onto, onto a, a topic that's around that for people to view and discuss. Now we've got this, we don't just have the papers, but we have somebody presenting their paper. Uh, and so when a discussion comes up about, oh, what did the author mean when, when they wrote this? It's like, well, <laughs> here's the video. We just invited the guy to come and speak. Um, the ability, if you're in the community call, to potentially ask questions of the author of a paper uh, live. I mean, uh, yes, if we can do this, especially if we can do it in a programmatic way, say we want to have uh, the, the, the entire first quarter of 2024 to be about governance or or something like like we, we choose a topic and, and so we start inviting people to come and present their stuff then uh, we almost become a kind of a digital um, I mean it's it's called a forum for a reason but uh, there's a lot of power there uh, in terms of in terms of bringing people into our into our larger network I, I strongly I strongly want to highlight this idea yeah I also like that idea and I know um, angel mentioned in the comments that we're also trying to build the coffee house out as kind of a casual way to do this. And so I think um, in this meta conversation about the community call, um, a thing that I want to make sure that we keep sight on is um, that the community call should, or at least I think, should be producing some type of value to the community. So that could be, as Muhammad was just talking, um, there, uh, if someone comes and does a presentation that there has to be not just like you get an opportunity, but like there's an expected opportunity that you are going to have to interact with our community in some way, shape or form, be a researcher or um, if you have a product that you are talking about or a solution that you're talking about. Uh, but I think that that like, there's a whole bunch of great ideas about different content types, but I, I think we also wanna make sure that the community call in some way, shape or form is more focused on providing um, value to the community as opposed to producing content not that i don't think that those two things can work together um but i, I would want us to stay kind of a little bit focused on like the community part of this i think yeah and i think it's uh 
kind of building off of that and the the points that were already raised a few times of uh you know the difference between this and coffee house chat and right if stepping away from let's think about what calls we have for a moment and just think about what are the the types of discussions we want to be hosting and facilitating given our broad mission and then how do we fit the calls around that at least a few that i that i kind of heard being discussed so far uh were right just kind of like talking about uh, broad discussions on a topic, right? It doesn't have to be a research paper specific thing, or there can be very research paper specific explorations, uh, which those potentially can either be very technical or more trying to explain it. Um, then there could be separate things that are, are more feedback oriented and, and discussion oriented versus presentation oriented, right? To, to what Paul uh, was just alluding to as well in terms of, right, if in the, because with academics, I, I do think that there is also what goals are they striving? What problems are they trying to solve when they want to go speak on another seminar series? Because uh, I know Mohammed mentioned that there are a lot of these. And I think that it's its own strain on people's time as the amount of speaker series and everything that exists, especially around Web3, because every crypto company wants to come in and sponsor one uh, at a university to like Algorand is doing their own and they're doing their own and these others are doing their own. and it's actually becoming a bit of a strain. And so I wonder how do we also make sure that we're providing some clear value? Because if it's just a presentation, then it's more of an amplification focus. And then how do we get as many people aware of it? Or is it about interacting with the content and understanding the research and how to apply it better? Uh, and then maybe, you know, how do we pair it with things like uh, being part of our writing cohorts and other ways for people to actually actively engage with those ideas over time and not just make it a single point in time when people get to engage with the idea. Um, and also thinking about how uh, this might, oh, and the other thing with the, with faculty members, I've realized that some folks have asked for private invite only ones of like, hey, I actually wanna get a result or a feedback on these early results from this research, but I'm not comfortable doing it in an open call or recorded fashion. Uh, and so I think, uh, you know, the that idea of kind of being fully public within the SCRF community uh, or invite only can be its own kind of like distinction of how we, you know, do we choose to have a fully public, uh, you know, either community call or eventually does it make sense to do its own separate, you know, the community call is more for the community to discuss a thing or hear from a project and talk about how it can be relevant for the community or how stuff works in Web3 or I don't know, I'm making up potential distinctions, but I, I do appreciate uh, that we're kind of circling around and getting towards like how do we differentiate these uh, but i really like the idea of thinking about how we get researchers on uh, and i do think like uh like a this week in research or something like that to build off of research pulse and uh, pull in also external researchers could be another potential direction uh, and i know i'm talking a lot so one last quick thing i'll mention is the student group outreach which we talked about a bit in the ppp yesterday and we'll talk about in a in a future community call but if we reach out to build seminars by topic right say for public goods at first but if we start supporting these kinds of open reading group and seminar groups how does that also interface with our community calls uh versus coffee house chats versus anything else uh so uh yeah apologies if just adding more questions but um yeah just wanted to throw that out there and uh we'll stop there just to follow up on that, um, knowing that there's different stages of research and every stage isn't prepared to be public, having a closed feedback uh, session that is like present your topic or your current research to uh, a group of specialists to get their feedback is like its own value add where I don't, I don't even think that needs to like crossover with the community call and that it could be its own its own thing um and especially in terms of offering someone in that stage of research uh a safe haven to present their research to people who know that it's not finished and won't judge it as if the person presenting is is trying to present it as if it's finished versus a community call i think would be more appropriate for somebody who is trying to present finished research or something that is at least at a stage enough to where they can start uh making it open to the public and not having to worry about um immediate feedback is like destructive criticism so i, I do think that that specific type of 
uh, Haven would be useful for researchers as well. Okay, we've gotten covered a lot of topics here. Um, and uh, I'm not really sure where to, where to pick back up um, in terms of like the things that have been discussed. So I'll just kind of move on with the presentation unless anyone has any more feedback on any of the things that have uh, come up specifically. I would just like to make one general comment, which is that if anybody would like to, at a technical level, explore how you know we can use GitHub and issues and project boards and all that to try to give some structure to anything that we're talking about, I'm available and would happy to have that conversation with you. All right. Um, I think personally, like one of the things that has come up a lot is like the distinction. You know, at this point, I'm just going to kind of abandon the slides because we're so all over the place. <laughs> but um, one of the distinctions between the coffee house and the um, community call is like, I am also going to be partnering with John in like running the coffee house. Um, and I know this is a call about the community call. But since these two things are sort of like treading on each other's toes, it, it seems, um, what kind of things for the people that do attend the coffee house, like what kind of things do you want to see out of that um, specifically? Because the intention is just like um, what we were discussing earlier, like bring in researchers and uh, discuss research, Chris, yeah. So as someone who doesn't attend the coffee house, what I thought the initial reasoning for the coffee house was that it's a less formal version of the community call. So if this is like where we start to articulate, like the community call is more formal, the coffee house is less formal, that's, that's what makes sense to me as someone who doesn't attend the coffee house in that it's like, um, I know the reason I attend this more formal community call is to stay in touch with the community in real time, uh, to brainstorm with the community that's not just the internal team, uh, but then also to have it in like a, a strict one hour format where it's like everybody understands that it starts at noon, ends at one or whatever the local time is so nobody wastes anybody else's time. And I think that they're I think you got the casual and lack of formality part of the coffee house down pat and the, the time wise it can be a little bit more of a free flow but some of the initial idea there also was um how do we have that type of a conversation but around research content so um, the initial push of the coffee house was at least at the very beginning of that call the very beginning of that chat um there's some topic or set of papers from the forum um, that is kicking off that call. So there was a, um, a um, some researchers have shown up for their own papers other times, or I think the intention is that eventually other people would just be like, hey, I just liked this one. Can we talk about this one this week? So there was a little bit of a research end there um, more than just a continuation of the community call. Yeah, we, we in fact want them to actually be separate. Like, like I know that's sort of the thought where it's like a less formal community call, but um, it, if that's the case, why don't we just stick around for an extra hour after the community call on the same channel and keep discussing the same thing? You know, like it, they should be distinct because they are distinct. Yeah, Maria. Yeah, I, yeah, I think I'm following. Uh, kind of had the same sense around the distinction between community and coffee house chat and like this feels pretty informal to me as well um i think maybe it was eugene but somebody brought up the idea of the distinction between chats where we want it to be a little bit more closed where we don't want it to be public facing where we don't want to record it and i feel like the coffee house chat just by the name of it feels like a really good format for something like that um, so I kind of like that distinction, and I don't see why we can't talk about research in these community calls. Like, that's such a huge part of what we do, and it's such a huge part of the community and the value add here. So I actually 
love to discuss more research here. Um, for the coffee house chats, I think something that could be cool is making them more like one-off intentional specials. I think it's a lot, well, I'm just gonna speak for myself, but it's a lot to block off two hours in the week, like back to back for even community call discussion. So that's just something from my perspective, but if they were, you know, one-offs and we marketed them, I would probably want to join. So that's just something from my personal standpoint. Yeah, I like the sort of idea of like keeping the coffee house as it's kind of intended to be, which is like discuss the research in a relatively informal way. Um, and I think that what would need to happen is like the community call actually makes a move towards that previously mentioned like more continuous conversation, perhaps like themes over a quarter or like uh, just just more, you know, they're more cohesive over a certain period of time. And I think that that's probably the move that I like. Um, yeah, it is mentally exhausting to brainstorm for quite a long time. Um, we're kind of running out of time here. Um, so we'll just go to the last slide. Uh, oops, thank you. Uh, I meant to say, uh, are there any more questions or thoughts or points that people would want to bring up um, in the last couple of minutes that we have here? Yeah, Chris. Like, in fact, the sense of urgency that you have because we're coming up to the end is I think the difference, just the main difference between the formality and informality of this call and the coffee house, I would assume in that we don't necessarily have a formal uh, topic every time, but it's like this call ends at whatever on the hour because this is the one where we're like drawing the line and saying it starts at this time, ends at this time, if you're not here, whatever, but the coffee house is more lax about the time. And that's just that subtle difference, I think, and, and then not recording the coffee house. So it's like those subtle differences, I think, are enough. I think that the coffee house does have the intention to be recorded, though. We, we have a Discord bot that does record and I believe is posted, but I might be wrong on the intention moving forward. Yeah, there's a couple on the YouTube. But yeah, see, so there's just more and more similarities, you know, coming in. Um, yeah, but indeed, we are running out of time. So um, thank you all for you know joining this discussion. Um, I personally like this format a lot, where we actually have a discussion um, that is pretty like free form, but we actually manage to stay on, on a lot of the topics that I had planned out. Um, Anyways, it seems like we're all thinking about these things in the same way. Um, and um, yeah, this, this recap is going to be uh, a tough one to, to format. But uh, yeah, um, I guess if there's anything else that needs to be done, Eugene, if you want to step back in. Yeah, no, nothing else. Thank you for running the call, Angel. Uh, yeah, this is an awesome conversation. And thank you to everyone for participating. And yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day, everyone. Yeah, thanks again, everyone. Um, hopefully, we can get something actionable out of this now. Uh, yeah. let's, we'll, we'll talk about this shortly uh, in turn. Uh, cool. Have a good See day. See you later. Thank you.